Back now to our top story. New developments today with the Wall Street protests now growing in several cities. The Democratic Campaign Committee now getting behind the protest movement as the political debate heats up. Take a listen to what we've heard on this movement just over the past couple of days. So this president and administration wants to continue to try and spend our way to prosperity. Part of it is jealousy. I stand by that. And here's why I don't have a lot of patience with that. My parents, they never played the victim card. My parents never said that we hope that the rich people lose something so we can get something. No, my dad's idea was I want to work hard enough so I can buy a Cadillac, not take somebody else's. And this is why I don't have a lot of patience for people who want to protest the success of somebody else. I, for one, am increasingly concerned about the growing mobs occupying Wall Street and the other cities across the country. And believe it or not, some in this town have actually condoned the pitting of Americans against Americans. But I didn't hear him say anything when the Tea Party was out demonstrating, actually spitting on members of Congress right here in the Capitol, and he and his colleagues were putting signs in the windows encouraging them. But let's not get down to but that. But do you think... Mm -hmm. So has this now spiraled into another partisan issue, and will it change the game? as we approach the elections in Washington. Brad Blakeman, former deputy assistant to President George W. Bush, and Dick Harpootlian is the South Carolina Democratic Party chair. Brad, let me start with you. Herman Cain says that this is about jealousy and playing the victim. Does he have a point? He certainly does. Uh, this president is running on a platform of it's us against them. The problem is he's the us. He's a multimillionaire. He's the guy who picked the pockets of Wall Street to the tune of fundraising that no president in the history of the United States has done. Where the Tea Party was real, it was organic. These protests of, of Wall Street, and you're seeing now in L.A. and other places, is organized. It's organized by labor. It's organized by people like George Soros and MoveOn.org. It's not real. It's phony. And they're trying to take uh, a page out of the Tea Party, but it won't work. You know, Dick, uh, Herman Cain also went on to say, look, these rallies in large part have been organized by labor unions. We know, we know that that is true. That's been confirmed that labor unions have a big role here. And he, but he says that, this is, that the reason they're doing it is to distract Americans from the failed policies of the Obama administration. Any truth there? I don't think so. I think uh, there are uh, certainly labor unions involved in this, but again, we've got to compare it to the Tea Party. We have, and I think what it demonstrates is extremes on both sides of the aisle, and that's why uh, this president's proposed a jobs bill that will put Americans back to work that ought to be voted on. And, and by the way, the Republicans ought to give the president the jobs bill he wants. If it doesn't work, then 24 or 18 months from now or 16 no, months from now, down they can say before. we gave him. Now, whoa, 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 let me finish, Brad. Let me finish. We will give him what he wants, and if it doesn't work, uh, then you can vote him out of office. But you can't, on one hand, say his policies don't work. But you're off topic. A, a and B, you're off topic and then not give him the tools the he says are necessary I mean, uh, to, to make it work. Now, these demonstrations are a sideshow on both sides. The Tea Party uh, is, is one sideshow, uh, and I think the Wall Street demonstrations are another. Neither one are going to move the body, body politic much. Brad, is that true? Or, I mean, because there's, the accusation is that the, these organized groups have co-opted this uh, anti-Wall Street movement to make it something that it didn't start out being. Sure. It, look, the Tea Party was real, and I beg to differ with Dick. Uh, the Tea Party made a difference, Dick. It made a difference on health care. It made a difference on the deficit and made Americans aware of the terrible problems we're in. The Wall Street protests are quite the opposite. They're trumped up. They're not real. They're propped up by this administration because the president needs images and actions to match his rhetoric. It's phony. You know it's phony. He even said so. So if, if the American people are, think they're going to be brought into class warfare, I don't think it's going to get this president reelected. Dick, on the, on the subject of class warfare, you had Nancy Pelosi coming out and saying, look, you know, she loves it. She loves these protests, as you, as you sort of gathered there and says, uh, I support the message to the establishment. Change has to happen. People are angry. And then you had Paul Ryan coming out and saying, uh, well, you know, the president is preying on the emotions of fear, envy and anger. And even Newt Gingrich came out and said, of course, they're angry. He said this is the natural product of President Obama's class warfare. Who's right? I think President Obama's right, and I think he's right because he's trying to get this country focused on putting people back to work. I, I will tell you this about the, about the Tea Party and, and, and the Wall Street demonstrations. I think the Tea Party did focus a lot of anger, 
against incumbents, and that's why a lot of incumbent Democrats got beaten in, uh, in, in 2010. The Wall Street folks, when you say it's put up, these folks began without any labor involvement. They began without any organized uh, support. Now, other folks have coalesced with them uh, because they understand that when hedge fund managers are paying 15 percent, hedge fund managers work until January 28 to pay their taxes, and the average American works well into March. It's not fair, and we need tax equity. Everybody ought to pay the same piece. Uh, when GE doesn't pay any taxes, it sends the wrong message. Not that they're wrong about that. They're, they're the GE's living by the laws uh, that have been passed. Brett, let me say one last thing. Quickly, Jeffrey uh, Emolt. Uh, Je okay, Jeffrey Emolt, the chairman of, and CEO of GE, was on 60 Minutes last night. He was asked by Leslie Saul, you've globalized, you've gone over the world and developed these plants, but you're an American company. Do you feel any allegiance to America, any patriotic support for America? He said, I feel that I am answerable to my stockholders. Now, as long as Wall Street is more answerable to its stockholders than the United States of America, that's not well, patriotism. Dick, that's not what this country is about. Ahead, Isn't Brett. it ironic that the person you just quoted is the president czar on American jobs? The very guy you no, say no, is I, shipping and, and jobs overseas. I understand these Ameri the, the president no, czar no, on American th jobs. Th maybe, maybe. This no, no. is what now, is wrong with this administration. He, he is bringing jobs back to this country. But what he typifies and what's wrong with Wall Street is that attitude that they are more they have more loyalty and allegiance to their stockholders than they do to this country. Right, and that's I what these go. protests got, are about. Go. Shipping Brett, our jobs ten seconds overseas. Or less. I'm Last sorry. Word. Well, look, we're not going to give the president what he wants because we've been down this road. It was an utter failure stimulus one, and we're not going to do it again. The American people deserve a mo monies that are spent well and are counted for, not another Solyndra or another Solyndra or another Solyndra. We're sorry. All right. I or Iraq war. I don't, I don't know about that apology, uh, Dick. I'm not sure about that. But thank you both so much for being here, Brad and Nick. Always thank a pleasure. You.